Well, after six months, one private and five public alphas, four betas, and two release candidates, the long-awaited Prusa Slicer 2.6.0 has been released. I've been excited for many Slicer updates and features over the years, but this one is definitely up there for me. Hardware improvements have increased both printer reliability and throughput, but slicers and firmware have really shown us how much further we can push our machine's limits. With 2.6, there is no way that I could possibly cover all of the different updates and features that have come out, so I decided to go with my top 10 favorite. In this video, we will of course look at some of the bigger, highly anticipated ones, and a few that I've not seen highlighted that are also major improvements. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off with some of the heavy hitters, first up we have the addition of organic supports. For those that are coming over from Cura, you may already be familiar with what Cura calls tree supports, but prior to this release, supports in Prusa Slicer were limited to the traditional scaffolding style. The release note states that the Prusa Slicer implementation, although based on Cura's tree supports, use an algorithm that's based on Thomas Rom's implementation. This version has more options, quicker slicing, uses less material, and is easier to remove. For those that are not familiar with this type of support, traditional support structures or scaffolding style supports are quite rigid. They start from either your printer's bed or your model and stack on top of each other uniformly until they reach your model. Although this works fine in many cases, depending on the model it can waste a fair bit of material, add a sizable amount of time to your print, and not come off very clean. With organic supports, the supports stem from larger branches into smaller branches. These are able to wrap around your model as needed to only reach the points that need supporting. This makes them more fluid, which works much better for things like curved surfaces, character models, and more organic geometries. On top of this, it will almost always save both time and material over traditional supports. Next up, we have the measurement tool. For anybody printing functional parts or parts with strict tolerances, this can be a lifesaver. On more than one occasion, I've downloaded a part only to find out that the measurements don't work for my specific piece of hardware. The measurement tool will quickly let you verify points, edges, circles, and planes of models directly from your build plate preview. To use this, import a model and click on the ruler icon on the bottom of the left toolbar. Then click on the first point of reference and second to get the measurement between the two. Clicking again will change your second point, and you can reset by hitting the escape key twice or choosing restart selection from the measure menu. If you want to scale a measurement, click on the pencil icon and enter your new value to have the model scale uniformly. Another big one in 2.6 is the text embossing tool. This lets you add text to any model directly from within the slicer. Anyone that has done some CAD design knows that adding text can be quite tricky and often requires an offset plane and projecting of text onto a model, so to have this as an option to quickly add text to any part on the fly is great. To use this tool, right click on the model you would like to add text to, then under add part, choose text. This will open the emboss tool where you can choose any font on your computer. You can also set font size and depth along with a handful of other text customizations. For operations, you're able to join, subtract, or use the text as a modifier. You can come back and edit the text anytime, even after closing out of the project, which is very useful for repeating similar custom prints. Next, we have the Cut Tool, which has been completely reworked. Previously, the Cut Tool was limited to cutting parallel to the bed. This limited its use or required you to switch between rotating your model and trying to get the cut correct. With the update, you can move and rotate the Cut Tool in any direction. You can even create your own cut line by holding shift, clicking, and dragging. You also have the choice to split the part into separate objects or stay as the same object with different parts. In addition to the new flexibility of the cut tool, you now have the ability to add connectors to your parts. This is really helpful for assembling a large model that you've chopped down and creating registration marks between multiple pieces. To use this tool, select the object you want to split and align the cut tool with the position you want to be cut. Then click Add Connectors to open the connector window. Here you can click to place plugs and dowels. There are a few style and shape options as well as the ability to adjust their depth and size. When you're happy with the placement, perform the cut to apply both the cut and connectors. You can repeat this process multiple times if you want to chop down the model further. When sliced, you'll see both the plugs and dowels sliced into the model. 
For anyone using Printables to download or host their models, there is now an ability to download any model from Printables directly into an instance of Prusa Slicer. Based on the release notes, this may be enabled by default at some point, but for now it does require manual enabling. To do this, go to your settings on your Printables account and under Display and Language, check Show Prusa Slicer button. You also need to enable this in Prusa Slicer as well, but in 2.6.0, it is enabled by default. To verify this, you can see the option under Configuration, Configuration Assistant, Downloads. Here you're also able to set the specific download folder. Now next to the download button of any model, there is a Prusa Slicer icon. You can click this to automatically download the file to your downloads folder and also load an instance of it into Prusa Slicer. If it's a multiple part model, you'll have the option to choose one or multiple parts to import. Next we have dynamic overhang speed, which should really help to clean up overhangs by giving them more time to cool as needed. This works by calculating the extrusion overlap with the previous layer and applying a speed value based on the slowdown function that has user defined parameters. With dynamic overhang speeds enabled under speed, you can set four speed values based on the amount of overlap. Those values are then used to slow down print speed when overhangs are encountered, resulting in cleaner overhangs tailored to what your specific machine might need to properly cool. One that I'm personally very excited to see that I'm shocked was not added earlier given its popularity is the addition of Clipper firmware. Although Clipper printers were able to be used with Prusa Slicer prior, there was never an option to choose Clipper and there were occasional errors related to non-compatible G-code commands. Well, this has been resolved and you can now choose Clipper under G-code flavor in printer settings. Machine limits set now are used to help with print time estimations and are not inserted into the slice G-code. Also, you could upload to Clipper by selecting Octoprint, but this was something I didn't know for a really long time. In 2.6.0, there is now an option to select Clipper via Moonraker, which makes much more sense. There is now a check that's ran at the point of slicing to make sure that there is no conflicting toolpaths. This should prevent models from accidentally being sliced inside of other parts or one part supports from running through a different part on your build plate. I have done both of these things, so a quick warning before learning the hard way is a nice inclusion. A new top and bottom infill pattern, monotonic lines, has been added. Unlike monotonic, that is a continual line that zigzags back and forth, monotonic lines are not connected to each other. The result is supposed to be smoother layers caused by less over extrusion and even improved dimensional accuracy. Last but certainly not least on my list is the many improvements made to multi-material 3D printing. I've always felt that Prusa Slicer was a bit lacking with control whenever I tested out a dual extrusion 3D printer, and this update corrects all of those issues. Previously, the only way to cool down a non-active extruder was to enable ooze prevention, which generated an ooze shield around your part. Although an ooze shield can be useful for certain models, it's not the right choice for all part sizes and geometries. With 2.6.0, ooze prevention no longer creates an ooze shield and is specifically used to cool down the non-active tool head. On top of that, you can define the range you would like the non-active tool head to drop by under idle temperature beneath filament settings. This will really benefit filaments like PETG or TPU that are known to ooze more by allowing you to drop the idle temperature further when printing with those materials. Previously, you had to choose between ooze prevention or a wipe tower, but you can now run both of them at the same time. If you do want to run a true ooze shield around your part, draft shield under skirt and brim will enable this. There are a handful of other fixes and improvements specific for multi-material printing that I am really happy to see. And that has been my top 10 favorite new features in Prusa Slicer 2.6.0. I hope that you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something that you can go run off and test out. For anyone that wants to dive deeper into the different changes, I'll have a link in the description over to the GitHub for Prusa Slicer 2.6.0. On the release page, you can click through all of the different alphas and betas and see which changes or features were implemented on each of those releases. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite new feature is, and if there's one that I did not cover in this video, please let me know so that I can go check that out. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.